welcome to the renaissance and welcome to IPOB leadership versus Eju autopilot a reply part two remember the whole of the ruling class are the same they are Mohammedan Fulani ruling over pagan tribes with whom they have no sympathy or interest except in what they can get out of them district officer in the 1930s on the oppressive nature and extortionist practices of the Emir of Lapai, and this is from the book The British in Northern Nigeria by Robert Hessler, and this was published in 1968. And from an Indian research board, just as Britain took the lead in the organization of slave trade, so later she led the movement for abolition partly because many people in Britain had come to see the moral evils of slavery and the trade, partly because continuance of the slave trade in the 19th century impeded the development of an increasingly valuable exchange in other products of West Africa. And this is from an Indian research board and the book is titled How Nigeria is Governed, edited by a research board and there was no date but it dates to about 70s in the 1970s and in this response video we will not waste our time on the actual comment we are responding to but examine the history and the present based on what the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices are doing and have been doing and a little example would be to ask those who supported a Fulani in Buhari in Nigeria in 2015 and what they benefited from it and also what they learned from it before giving their support to a Peter Obi today who wants to reap where Namdekano sold. Remember, it would be sheer stupidity that Namdekano is in jail and then Peter Obi is going to become president allegedly to do the good things that Namdekano was campaigning for. And another example may be on those who were against Donald Trump based on what the slave master told them but cannot see that the killings going on in Nigeria or West Africa as a whole that Trump tried to help in some way have been reinforced by the present administration and they have also removed Nigeria from the list of countries that support and aid the persecution of Christians. It tells us that it is the reason they were all united against Trump. You don't need to believe us, but let's read a little about how they did it here. And it says, Nigeria removed Russia added to US State Department's religious persecution list. And it goes on to say, USCIROF appalled at unexplainable Nigeria decision welcomes Russia and Taliban inclusion and wishes India, Syria and Vietnam were also named and shamed. Remember, nothing changed. The killings are still going on in Nigeria. And further down it says, the most controversial change, Nigeria, which was finally added to the top tier CPC list last year, is no longer included. We want to ask you, when this administration came in and less than a year within its lifespan, it has removed Nigeria while the killings are still going on. What does that tell you? Remember, if you supported them when they were fighting against Trump, we now want to ask you, what does this tell you? What about when Trump asked the Nigerian president who is a Fulani, Fulani is an England where the biggest players in the evil of the slave trade, why they were killing Christians. What did the BBC do? The BBC turned it on its head to say Trump was stirring controversy. You need to understand what games these people are playing. The slave master is a sort of beast. And further here, we see a newspaper report saying Khan. Khan means Christian Association of Nigeria, which is politicized anyway. But it says Khan rejects US removal of Nigeria from religious violators list. Take note of this. And he goes on to say, in doing so, the administration of President Joe Biden ignored the recommendation from the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, USCIROF. The removal of Nigeria from the list was contained in a statement by the U.S. Secretary of State, Mr. Anthony Blinken. The announcement came one day before Blinken's arrival in Nigeria for his Africa tour. So you need to understand that these people work together. If you remember that Biden was Obama's vice and it was Obama and the slave hunters that removed Jonathan 
who was a Christian at that time, then it will begin to give you an idea of what is going on. Never forget, like we told you, both Islam and Christianity are tools and weapons of conquest, jihad and slave trade. And we shall make another video to show you why they are doing what they are doing because it is part of their plan and why they were against Trump for not supporting their evil against the Negroes. And never forget, in Obama's message to Nigeria, he cited the mantra of One Nigeria which was used to commit the genocide of 1967-70 to by the British and their slave hunting accomplices against the Negroes in Biafra. And going back to what we were saying, then Calloway and the false narrative of Aborigine or Niji or all those identities they wanted to change. Have you ever wondered who is the sponsor of Dan Calloway and the Aborigine narrative? Remember, somebody must be behind him. For example, you see how YouTube controls our content, our viewer count, our subscriber count and everything. Why do you think Dan Calloway's own is not meddled with? Even though he claims to tell you that YouTube reduced this or reduced that, it is clear to everyone that somebody is sponsoring him. Who do you think is the sponsor of Dan Calloway? Have you also wondered who could have sponsored the so-called African Americans who protested in New York with placards saying that the killings and genocide in southern Nigeria and Biafra land was not true? Have you wondered who sponsored them, who made those placards, who gathered them and paid them to make the protests? And just for the records, we look at the protests here by the so-called African Americans hired by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices to protest and deceive the rest of humanity that the killings in West and Central Africa, which was Negro land, are not going on as are today. And the placards read, Genocide in Eastern Nigeria, Plain Propaganda, Protecting Rights Priority for Nigerian Government. Worshippers and places of worship protected in Nigeria. Please take note of what the placards are saying. Remember, the sponsors made these placards. These people were only paid to come and participate in the protest. And this one says, Nigerians want national unity, not secession. And never forget that the British and their slave hunting accomplices, the Fulanese, are the ones killing people over one Nigeria and one Cameroon today. While the BBC is the official propaganda channel against anything like freedom of Negroes, it has been so from the beginning of whenever till today. And it goes on further here to say, Nigerian Christians not targets of genocide or ethnic cleansing. Remember, this is all staged. They paid people, gave them these placards to display. And for the records, the controlled Nigeria media reported it as agents of Nigerian government paid blacks in America $500 each to stage pro-Buhari protests. Remember, the Nigerian media is controlled by the slave master and his accomplices. This is why they are saying it is pro-Buhari. But if you looked at what the placards read, you will see that nothing Buhari there. That's because they don't want to mistakenly propagate their Islamization agenda. And in the event you don't understand what we're saying, if you look at the placards, you see that none of them is saying anything about Buhari. It says, worshippers and places of worship protected in Nigeria. This one says, genocide in eastern Nigeria, plain propaganda. The other one says, Nigerian Christians not targets of genocide or ethnic cleansing. Remember, the outcry of the so-called Christians got to Trump. And he tried to do something about it. That was why they all turned against him. You should have asked yourself, how could someone who won the previous election, despite all they said about him, and four years after, he became so unpopular that they were fighting to take him out by all means possible. And for those who may be following the freedom struggles in Biafra and Ambazonia, you will see that the moment they removed Trump, less than few months after, they had removed the Israeli Prime Minister. Those are the ones that were sympathetic to the plight of Negroes in Biafra and Ambazonia. And then they went on to kidnap Namdekano. You need to understand who the slave master is as a subtle beast. And we are left to ask you the question again, if you ever thought Christianity and Islam had any powers in them or were true, do you think the slave master, especially England, the British, would have allowed those religions or golden calves as we call them get to the Negroes. If you thought so, please put it in the comment section. And do you remember when we told you that the COVID and all the lockdown may be all about Biafra and Ambazonia? Remember, we never said you shouldn't cuss us out. 
We never said you shouldn't call us names or conspiracy theorists, but we want you to pay attention to every detail and the body language of the slave master and look at his historical records. And we shall make a video in future to explain how that game played out. But then we challenge you to ask the Nkalawe since there is no relationship between the Negroes in Africa and those in the plantation now called the United States. Remember that's what he claims. He claims that they are not related in any way which is what he is sponsored to say. Now ask him why did the slave master hire African Americans for the protest and no other group? Why didn't they hire other groups except the groups? That's because they look alike. But the reason we wanted you to ask him this question is because we know that the slave master being a subtle beast will not allow him to address that topic. The reason is because it will send the message they didn't want people to hear. Similar to what you saw in the controlled Nigerian media saying Nigerian agents. If you were asked this question now for example, where it says agents of Nigerian government paid blacks in America $500 each to stage pro Buhari protests. Who will you say are these agents of Nigerian government? Was it the Nigerian embassy? Was it an individual? Why would they go and pay these people but then will also kill those who agitate for Biafra freedom with the support of the British? But leaving this apart for now to examine the comments we are responding to from our previous video, we saw where that individual said. And this was in response to our question of how he thought Simon Ipma could restore Biafra with his nauseating English and lies. We missed the lies part, so he latched on to the English part, which is totally different. But then he responded by saying, you ask that if MNK, that's Mazin and Kano and IPUB with all the groups all over the world have not been able to restore Biafra, what makes you think Simon Ipma with his nauseating English and lies can give him Biafra? And his answer was that if all the groups and institutions that have worked with Mazin and Kano have not been able to generate the kind of crowds followership and love that Simon Ipa has generated amidst all the attacks and propaganda from the compromised DOS, Britain and their BBC, Nigerian government and their brown envelope media, one Nigerianist and even you, all in just the short space of 11 months, notwithstanding what you call his nauseating English and we include his lies, that is the key thing we missed out. What then makes you think he cannot give him Biafra in the absence of MNK? Our interest is where he said or suggested that Simon Ipa had generated the kind of crowd and followership and love more than what Namdekano has, which is a lie. So our interest is that point. That is a very big lie. Without name dropping of Namdekano's name, Simon Ipa won't even have followers in the first place. And our little question to this individual is one, when he talked about economic sanctions, why couldn't he enforce or implement that if he had that type of love that you claim he has? Two, when he thought about Sunday sit at home, why did nobody obey him? And for those who may be following Simon Ipman without knowing that he is not really in the struggle, he was sent by the slave master and his accomplices to divide IPOB and destroy the struggle. We see from these newspaper publications we referenced in our previous video that they were praising him apparently their plan was simple when they kidnapped him the canon they put him as a leader and then control the movement through him that's all they are doing if you notice he has tried to bring ipub to disrepute by sharing of women's nudes online trying to discredit the traditional way of life, that is what you see when Enam Dekano talks about Chukwa Biyama, which we might look at briefly in this video. You will see that that is why he is sharing those things he calls rituals. Anybody who is knowledgeable enough about the true Negro way of life, as in what the slave master called paganism, will know that the pictures of Nelly being shared and notes being shared have nothing to do with any rituals. Rituals are never done on camera. And even if a woman has to go naked in front of the shrine or wherever, the priest, if he's a man, will not be there. He will only give instructions as to what she needed to do and then leave for her to do it. 
And above all, if you listen to the voice of the so-called native doctor that Simon Epa presented to you, if you have common sense, all we challenge you to do is to go and ask any native doctor that you know if those things are true. Those things are lies. But because the slave master walking through his slave hunting accomplices who we have told you severally, they lack both humanity and common sense. They are scripting those things. They think you are gullible. They think you are an animal. They think you are foolish. That's why they are playing that game. That alone is enough to tell any sensible person that Simon Epa is not fighting for any Biafra and is not in the struggle anymore. We remember we once told you that he was. Now that it is as clear as day that he is no longer in the struggle, we are still telling you. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not. All those expositions are to endear himself to the Biafran so that you start seeing him as somebody who is legitimately in the struggle. He is not in the struggle. Ask yourself, what has the freedom struggle that Nandekana has been championing for years now got to do with the nude of a woman? So you believe in your inner self that Simon Ekma and Nelly of Febu could love more Nandekana than his immediate family and siblings. If you are not gullible, there is no way you can still be following Simon Epa. It's impossible. Above all, permit us to ask you, what is Simon Epa's real name? And again, if you happen to know the Nigerian media, which is fully controlled by the slave master and his accomplices, you will see how they are praising Simon. And it says a prince, a lawyer, a soldier, a politician, meet Simon Epa, and the colonel's replacement on radio. Ask yourself if the Nigerian media has ever written anything true about Nam De Kano, including the BBC. But you notice in this one, they are describing him as a prince, a lawyer, a soldier, a politician, because they are trying to get him endeared to the Biafrans. They wanted to prepare him as the next king so they can control him and the Biafra struggle through him. Observe here also that Sahara reporter says a Finland-based Nigerian Finnish citizen Simon Eba takes over from Nandekano at Radio Biafra. So if you understand how the slave master and his accomplices operate, you will see that they planned this in such a way that if they kidnapped Nandekano, they will now present Simon Eba as the king. And further here, we see that this one says Simon Eba is presenter at Radio Biafra. He recently replaced Mazen and the Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, who according to IPOP was abducted in Kenya and extraordinarily renditioned to Nigeria by the government of Nigeria, bordering on allegations of treasonable felony. In this post, we will take a look at Simon Eba biography and his current net worth. If you notice, the Nigerian media, which is controlled by the slave master and his accomplices, is presenting him in very positive light. And that is the red flag there. And this is why we suspect that the DOS of IPOB obviously knew that Simon Ipa was coming with the mandate of the slave master. Hence, they blocked him out. Imagine if today he is sharing women's nudes and bold enough to tell you that it is for the release of Nam De Kano what he could have done if he had found himself in a position of authority in IPOB. He will go and kill somebody and tell you that it is for the release of Nam Dekano because they are looking for a way to frame him. That's what they are trying to do. They know that he did not commit any offense and the British knows that there is no law against whatever he has agitated for. But the British is a master. They have been involved in the slave trade and all forms of man's inhumanity to man against the Negroes. So that is why they are trying to look for a way to create a scenario or a pretext to carry out whatever their plans are. And we see further down here where he tells us about Simon Epa and he says Simon Epa came to popularity in July 2021 upon replacing the leader of IPOB and director of Radio Biafra Mazen Namdekano as the secessionist new radio anchor. Remember, the slave master is a subtle beast and the devil has to speak through the serpent. He just wanted to get the serpent in Simon Epa to be spoken through. So this is why you are seeing them trying to discredit IPOB in all forms. Ask yourself, if Simon Epa is genuinely looking for Biafra, he would have supported everything that goes towards the actualization of Biafra, except the negative ones. But tell us what is bad about going to Brussels and the EU parliament in Belgium to protest with Ambazonia and Odudua. But Simon Iqbal was against it. What about the hero's remembrance? Did the autopilot do anything about it? The answer is no. That should tell you right there that they are not there for the struggle. If you notice that they have seen that they are 
imposing him as a leader in IPOB has failed. They are now trying to present him as a spokesperson for Biafra. Remember, their senses when they bomb innocent people, they will use him to say it was done by IPOB. And this is why you see that the IPOB leadership haven't seen that path. Is telling him to separate himself from IPOB and let's see how far you will go. And that's why you notice that he keeps saying he is IPOB autopilot. And so we have a few questions for supporters of Simon Ekba and those that follow him anyway. If you are a follower of Simon Ekba and yet to realize that he is sabotaging the Biafra struggle, we suggest you do not watch this video because you may not understand it. However, what is Simon Ekba's real name? if we may ask. Where exactly does Simon Ekba come from and who are his parents? And if Simon Ekba destroyed the DOS or leadership of IPOB today so the movement can scatter because that was the main reason they kidnapped Unam De Kano and he stopped broadcasting tomorrow, what will you do about it? And what will become of the Biafra struggle? That's assuming Simon Ekba is genuinely in the Biafra struggle, for example, and he stopped coming on online from tomorrow and doesn't talk about Biafra again. Tell us how you take the movement to the next level. Remember, we have to tell you where the slave master is going. We have spent hours of research to understudy the slave trade, the slave master and his accomplices. We can predict them. For example, look at this. Simon Ekba claims here to have been sued to court by whoever. We don't know who it could have been is certainly not the leadership of IPOB. Remember he did that to evoke pity. Have you asked him, okay, what about that court case? And you can see it says a submission of a criminal complaint charging Mr. Simon Eightman Joko of Kopaku whatever in Latte, Finland with leading, participating in, supporting, funding and encouraging a terrorist organization currently engaged in numerous acts of terrorism in southeastern Nigeria to National Prosecution Authority, Office of the Prosecutor General in Finland, whatever, and he says it was prepared by Dr. M. Ihedebo, the General Secretary, Overseas Igbos Federation, an organization of ethnic Nigerian Igbos resident in Germany. Now, if you notice, he was the one that announced all this. He may have prepared all this himself, just to evoke pity, so that you can keep thinking that they are oppressing him, whereas he is an instrument of divide sent by the slave master and his accomplices to divide IPOB and destroy it. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not, just watch and see. Like we asked you, if he stopped broadcasting today for example, what will you do tomorrow? Remember he told people to stop attending IPOB meetings and to stop paying dues. That is to help destroy the movement. That's all he's trying to do. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not, time will tell. That's why we always tell you that we are not seers. We're not spiritualists. Whatever we say is based on pure research and information about the slave master and his accomplices and how they operate. This is why you notice we mix up things that happened in the plantation now called the United States where the Negroes were shipped to as slaves and things that happened in what was Negroland and Guinea and elsewhere around the world as well so that you see the big picture. And back to what we were saying. Do you know any Negro freedom struggle in history that the slave master did not destroy by bringing up an enemy within, similar to Simon Eba against IPOB today? And never forget, if you are one of those that believe that Namdekano authorized him to broadcast from Radio Biafra, why not ask yourself, what if the DOS somehow found out that he was actually an agent of the slave master, hence they decided to block him? Otherwise, think about it, the DOS has more than 5 to 10 people in it. How could all of them at the same time be against this individual if he was genuine? Now imagine if Simon Eber had destroyed the DOS as soon as Nandekan was kidnapped a year ago today. Would anybody be talking about Biafra struggle anymore? The reason you are seeing them make these mistakes now is because things did not go as they planned. They thought that after a few days people would have forgotten the struggle, the movement was scatter. That's why the BBC who we know is the biggest enemy of Biafra and Negro freedom at the moment, wrote this as soon as Namdekano was kidnapped. Namdekano's arrest leaves Nigeria's IPOB separatists in disarray. Our question to you is, have you ever spent time as an individual, as a black person, as a Negro, as an African to ask yourself, what is the interest of the British that they are so desperate for one Nigeria? 
if you are supporting one Nigeria with them? Ask yourself that question. Isn't it foolish of you that you are supporting something that does not benefit you? Shouldn't you ask yourself that simple question? And this takes us to a few questions for people who support Peter Obi. If we assumed that the votes counted, if Obi became president, what and what do you think he can do and how? Will those things pass through the National Assembly controlled by the slave master and the slave hunting accomplices? And just so you know, the code of Moses smashing the tablets of the law is what they deploy. The law does not apply to the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. And that code tells them to always break the law. So if you think there is any use of the National Assembly and the Senate, just be it known to you that before you discuss anything in the National Assembly, you have to write it and present it to the head of the Senate or the House of Rep members. He can then choose whether or not they want to hear you say such a thing. So even if you went and wrote that you wanted them to talk about the killing of innocent people over the Afro agitation, they won't allow you come to the floor to say it. The slave master is a subtle beast. That is why the British has a policy of ruling through the Fulanese. They are the only ones that have that heartlessness. That man seeing humanity to man is in them that they enjoy it. We are going to read part of it here. Don't worry. Don't think we are profiling anybody. You will see whatever we are saying written down by the slave master and his accomplices in one way or another. For example, the Fulani accused the British of taking more slaves than they paid for. Those things are things that should be looked at. But nobody will look at them because the slave master and his accomplices are still working together. So all the British needed to do was to compensate them so they can keep quiet. So again, we ask you, have you wondered why P2B left the PDP soon after meeting with the British Prime Minister? Do you think in your heart of hearts he could have gone there without talking about his presidential ambition? If you thought so, then so be it, but stop watching our videos. But if you thought he could have, then ask yourself, why did he come back and quickly left the PDP for another party? Could it be that they told him that there was no way for him? If they told him that, does it mean that he doesn't know his status as a slave? And even at that, remember the person he went to meet is the British Prime Minister who wrote this, Boris Johnson that colonialism in Africa should never have ended and dismissed Britain's role in slavery. Remember, the British were the biggest players in the slave trade. And the same Boris Johnson went on to say the best fit for Africa would be if the old colonial powers or their citizens scrambled once again in her direction on the understanding that this time they will not be asked to feel guilty. What does this tell you? This should tell you all you need to know about what games they are playing. But if only you can bring out time and research the activities and atrocities of the British on the Negroes during the slave trade, that's all you need to do. And you'll understand every game and every trick they play. And so if you went for a PVC to select, remember, it's not an election, it's a selection because the slave master handpicks whoever is there. We will show you how the elections are conducted and you see how they are rigged as well. To select Obi, while Namdekano is still unlawfully detained by the slave master and his accomplices, do you mean to tell us that the roads, the bridges, the schools, the hospitals, etc. that Namdekano asked to be built for which he was kidnapped will now be built by Peter Obi, assuming he became president? So what you're telling us is that what Namikano was demanding and they found it what to go and kidnap him from wherever and detain him for a year now is what P2B will become president and start doing and they will no longer condemn it or complain about it. The problem here is you don't understand why they are doing what they are doing and that's the biggest challenge. In the event you do not understand why they do all they are doing, let us reference The Negro and the Nation by Hubert H. Harrison and this was published 1917. Here we see that in the first place, do you know that the most rabid Negro-hating Southern aristocrat has not the slightest objection to sleeping in the same house with a Negro? If that Negro sleeps there as his servant, he doesn't care if his food is prepared by a negro cook and handled by a negro waiter before it gets to him. 
he will eat it. But if a Negro comes into the same public restaurant to buy and eat food, then, oh my, he gets all het up about it. But why? What's the difference? I will tell you. The aristocrat wants the black man to feel that he is on a lower level. When he is on that level, he is in his place. He is liked, but he must not be allowed to do anything to make him forget that he is on this lower level. He must be kept in his place, which means the place which the aristocrat wants him to keep. You see, the black man carries the memory of slavery with him. Everybody knows that the slaves were the exploited working class of the South. That put them in a class by themselves, down at the bottom, downtrodden, despised, and inferior. So this is why when you talk about Biafra or freedom, the Fulanese, incited by the British, will come after you. The army were the slave hunters. They are conditioned to believe that it was an anathema for the Negroes to ask for freedom. Imagine someone who you believe should be an animal, for example, seeking to be free. Just imagine this little girl, this house girl in this clip where the family went to eat and kept their house help who is akin to a slave in Nigeria today, comes up to say she wants to be the one to eat first from that meal that they are sharing in this clip that you are looking at. That's ideally how the slave master and his accomplices see things like agitation for Biafra. It is an article of faith for the British that the Negroes remain in that state of servitude by any means possible. That's what they are doing. That's why you see the British High Commissioner running all over the place trying to make sure that their slave hunting accomplices do not let down their guards. The slavery must continue. The oppression and devil against the Negroes is something they must continue. And if you are from southern Nigeria and you somehow think it's all about Igbos, it's all about Igbos because that's what they tell you. Remember, they won't also give that power to anyone outside their slave hunting accomplices. So it doesn't matter how you say it. Even as they have brought Ifa Yokowa, they may not also still give a tickle and we will tell you what games they want to play in a later video. And now that you understand why they are doing whatever they are doing, this is why you are not allowed to agitate freely for Biafra. They would rather go from behind, kill people and tell you it is those that are agitating for freedom. We want you to take note of the fact that when those previous people under which MFO left the agitation, for example, for Biafra freedom, they opened the radio station. You notice that which MFO is broadcasting almost every day after leaving the struggle and blaming in and the canoe. That's because the slave master understands the brain of the Negro, that faith comes by hearing. So he's looking for every means to be lying to you, believing that you will believe his lies. That's what they are trying to do. And that's why you also have Simon Epa telling you the same things, but in a different way. The goal of Simon Epa is to divide IPOB and destroy the struggle. Remember, if he stopped broadcasting tomorrow, all those that have followed him will end. That's it. 